All right, how's everybody doing? And again, feel free to let me open the chat. Ah, uh, okay. We already have the chat being used. Here we go. So I'm about to record this. And again, I'm going to turn it off after the presentation. So nothing anybody talks about will be recorded. Five, four, three, two, one. Recording in progress. All right. How many of us are planning for like a big 2022 like we do every year like it's gonna be big man it's gonna be big it's gonna be this everybody wants to progress everybody wants to go higher everybody wants to do more 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 moving forward and that's cool and that's dangerous not according to my opinion but according to um universal mental laws so the best way that I can explain that is, and I know a few of you have already, but once you take uh, my mental loss uh, workshop, and I feel super blessed uh, by it because I have presented it to some of the highest minds in all different genres of life, and I never got anything lower than a 10. And again, I'm talking about I presented this to major, major, major uh, go-getters. So to make a long story short, if you take uh, my mental laws workshop, these talks will make even more sense and it'll be even easier to manifest your purpose, um, your purpose goals through some of the uh, highest or so-called lowest uh, moments of your life. So here we go. We're going to start with the mind. And again, request me to unpack any point moving forward. So law number one that I like to say is mind. Everything starts and ends here. So the intentions of this part is to best identify macro and micro purpose to best manifest purpose goals. So I'm going to say it again. To best identify macro and micro purpose, that's you, to best manifest purpose goals. What is my mission on this part? to clear any mental blocks that stagnates 3D manifestation of purpose goals. Again, there's many dimensions. I did a lot of um, presentations on that. Uh, the third dimension is nothing more than this physical reality. Um, we all have goals and houses and cars and all type of 3D manifestations that we want to uh, manifest. So literally, this is just this just works real well in the 3D. I say all the way up to maybe 5D, 6D. And all I'm saying is these are different dimensions, which the science world backs up. So this is nothing like major. And let me go into some definitions. So um, everybody knows where I'm standing with what I'm saying or presenting to you all. Definition of purpose. The reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Definition of destiny. The events that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future. The hidden power believed to control what will happen in the future. Or fate. Fate is my favorite word. Definition of good. That which is morally right or righteous. Definition of bad, of poor quality or low standard. Definition of duality, an instant of opposition or contrast between two concepts or two aspects of something. Two. Now, a Christian reference, because again, Jason, you're giving me definitions to, uh, what is the topic again? The topic is planning for and manifesting higher goods and higher bads. You want us to plan for higher bads. Absolutely. You could literally die if you don't do this. Again, according to my perspective, I could be wrong. Okay, so a Christian reference to me pushing this duality is Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. 
I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. That sounds like duality to me. Uh, let's go with an Islamic reference because I know we have people in that uh, world as well. So the Holy Quran 716 says, Satan is actually saying this. Since you have led me astray, so you made me look bad, I shall, I shall surely sit in ambush for them on your straight path. Hold on. According to this, the Holy Quran 716, Satan says, since you have led me astray, I shall surely sit in and sit in ambush for them on your straight path. So according to this, you could be on your straight path and evil is ready for you. Versus I'm not in the I'm not in the world. It's like, okay, I got you on your straight path. And 717 says, then I will come upon them from the front, from the rear, and from the right, and from their left. And you will not find most of them thankful. Okay, um, a science reference is we experience many different things per second. Which means we at least experience many forms of duality per second along with the dualities of right and wrong, relevant and non-relevant, real and fake, etc. If that makes sense. So we're dealing with a lot of decisions to make, let alone other people's lives. So let's go deeper into duality. Meaning, everything has at least two sides to everything, right? At least two sides. I promise you it's more than just two. This is at least two sides. Here we go. Progress can kill you because it always comes with the least two sides. They tell you to go with the flow, right? But the higher flow has a higher duality. You can control you can control forms of flow. And but this is what I'm saying. Be careful planning your best self because you're making your way to experience more worse self situations to even get you there. Okay, I think he dropped out, but came back in. Here we go. So I'm going to say this again, because once I really started studying this, this scared me a little bit, since we're dealing with duality. And if everybody can mute their mics. Um, hold on. Okay, so progress can kill you because it always comes with at least two sides. They tell you to go with the flow, but that has a duality. You can't control forms of flow, but be careful planning your best self because you're making your way to experience uh, more worse self situations to get there. If the law of duality is a law and it's connected to everything. So when bad comes, study it, learn it, understand it, but plan for the higher good because let me tell you again, when bad, and I gave the definition of bad, so again, according to that definition that I gave you, when bad comes, study it, learn it, overstand it, because you have to plan for a higher good because you've earned it. You've earned that good experience if you successfully experience that bad reality. Another, that's one thing about my life is hell. I know so good go come to me. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. When bad comes, study it, learn it, overstand it, but plan for the higher good because you earn that good experience. This is where a lot of public speakers stop speaking because that makes everybody feel good. Like, oh, I earned this good experience. If you successfully experience the bad reality. Only way you get that. So, higher good is growing right in front of you, in your face. But we weren't born with eyes in the back of our head, so guess what's growing behind 
you. <laughs> if get thee behind me, Satan was a person, literally, because it applies to not having eyes in the back of your head. All that good. Look at all this good. Look at all this good. Everything has a duality. So you're literally saying you're a positive only battery because, and I don't, I don't know of any positive only batteries that work. Um, but again, everybody's positive only batteries. It's the positive and negative that works, or it's the positive and negative that goes together. So higher or good comes with something that's higher. That's all I'm saying. So again, all this planning on going to the top, have a bad plan. Have a, have a, a so-called bad reality plan. Because again, higher good is growing right in front of your face. While behind us, higher bad is growing. Whatever that means to you. So, let me show you the good news. Let me show you the good news about this piece. The good news about this piece of understanding duality is your enemies don't understand how their negative energy transfers to you because it gives you the right amount of duality energy to accomplish your so-called best goals because good and bad levels to er there's good and bad levels to everything. So we're in the ocean of different forms of karma and cause and effect of ourselves, our families, communities, ancestors, our ancestors, communities. Um, the human body is mostly the human body is mostly made of water. Um, there's water all in the air. We never really escape water. And last time I checked, so-called spirits or energies, whatever you want to call it, reside in water. Um, so that would make sense from even a scientific standpoint how energies would exist all around us. Um, but again, we live, we're in, a, we're in an ocean of different forms of karma and cause and effect. And the cause and effect of ourselves first, our families, communities, our ancestors, and our ancestors' communities. So... Literally, that's the law of duality. And again, all this is going to tie into what I'm, what I'm talking about. So according to the law of rhythm, you can control the highs and lows of your life, even when you can't. Uh, your highest version of yourself is tied to your highest version of your mind. Why is the highest version of bad allowed uh, to become the high? Oh, okay. Why is the higher version of bad? Why does that allow us to become the higher version of our good selves? Is bad our only teacher? Do we really learn when everything's going good? I'm not going to lie. A lot of people was talking about 2021 was just horrible. And I'm not going to lie, it was. But if you literally became the good to the bad that you were so-called experiencing... It's kind of like mm, this year. You, I'm, I'm taking everything back. I'm taking. I'm literally taking everything back. Not to show everybody on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or anything like that, but it's literally like if 2021 kicked your butt and you purposely was the opposite swing to that bad, according to the definitions that I gave in the very beginning. Good, you're actually old good. According to science, that's what I'm saying. I'm not I'm taking the spooky part out. According to science and logic of the law of duality, up, down, boy, girl, dry, wet, skinny, fat, good, evil, God, devil, nothing, something, positive, negative, problem, solution. <laughs> According to the logic of that, if you experience that much bad, and again, you were focused on building the duality good to the bad, instead of running from the bad, you build the duality good to it. You know how much bad I was going through? Yeah. What good did you do? You know how much bad? Yep. How much good did you do at that specific time? Do you know what time that bad stuff? Yeah, yeah. Tell me the good stuff that you did at that specific time. Because bad, according to the law of duality, reigns on our parades. Because everything is going good and bad comes in. Why don't we do the same thing to bad? Jason, because that's crazy. Who plans something good right when bad happens? Well, bad doesn't think that's crazy to do it to us. 
And last time I checked, according to the law of cause and effect, and we're going to go to that in a little bit, all the bad that comes to us is our fault anyway. I promise you. What? No, no. This is what they were doing at the place. Well, who drove there? And that's not even the... That's some like, oh, I'm blaming you without proof. No, according to the law of cause and effect, who put your clothes on? Who brushed your teeth that morning? Who got ready to go to that place? Who had the ability to really research that situation? We can, we're going really to the essence of literally overcoming the so-called bad years in this made-up world we're living in to where now money is about to be online. And everybody believes it, so it's real. So <laughs> I would be insane if you believed everything. NFTs. Um, this is Albert Einstein's marker. Let me take a picture of it and sell it for $100 million. If everybody believes it, it's real. But I'm not going to lie. That makes sense why everybody's depressed. Because so many, so many realities existing within do it on your own. You don't need nobody, but science says we can explain what families are <laughs> and connection of two people. But again, we're going to go into this as far as making sense in a business world. So, um, again, is bad our best teacher? I don't know nobody. How, I don't care what religion that everybody say the same thing because of all this bad stuff. I am experiencing good. What's your attack to bad? When's the last time? So that verse, and again, we'll go back. Remember that Remember that verse I just uh, uh, show y'all how the devil said, I'm going to uh, wait and ambush. When's the last time you ambushed the devil? Jason, you sounding spooky. No, I, I could talk to you too. When's the last time you ambushed negative energy? You're taught to stay away from it. That's spiritual. Last time I checked, alchemy is spiritual. But staying away from it is, is the thing to do in 2022. Changing it for the best, to me, I thought that was magic. But at the end of the day, bad seems to be our best teacher. And we just wait for it to happen. Because again, I don't know about you. Everybody I asked this to, I said, what's your bad? What's your higher bad plan? Because again, I know everybody's getting blessed and they want blessings. And I'm like, that's tied to duality. What's your, I don't think about that. I'll deal with that when it comes. And I'm like, now let me go back up to that scripture. I'm going to say it again. According to the Bible, <laughs> That's way older than us. In Isaiah 45, 7, I formed the light. I formed the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. The Quran says in 7, 16, Satan says, since you have led me astray, I shall surely sit in ambush for them on your straight path. So again, it's like, I don't care how strong you trying to go. I'm going to wait for you on your straight path. I was like, man. Okay. Um, and then 717 of that same um, flow. Then I will come upon them from front to rear, <laughs> to their right and to their left. And you will not find most of them thankful. So... I'm not going to lie. If you look at it like you fighting the devil, you could be scared. Like, oh my God, I'm fighting the devil. I'm scared of the devil. Why don't you just be positive fighting negative? That makes you stronger than the, just the devil. The devil is kind of big. And again, we give the devil so much credit because according to Isaiah 45, 7, he didn't even create evil. <laughs> I, the Lord, that God do these things. But we give evil to the, de to, to the devil or negative energy. That's hilarious to me. So, um, since God created evil and makes peace and created light and darkness, what if God really just created duality 
and gave us the free will to experience that stuff, even though we blame God for all the stuff that we had the free will that's according to uh, that's connected to the law of cause and effect um, for all the stuff that we experience. All I hear in these verses <laughs> is God saying, "Hey, y'all, I created duality. The devil's gonna do this." God is doing this. All this good stuff is over here. <laughs> All this bad stuff is over here. I'm like, the law of duality. Let's control it now instead of being controlled by it. Let's literally control it. You're going to have to do a lot of stuff you don't want to do, but you can control it. And again, we're talking about going higher because, again, higher good produces higher good. But according to the law of duality, Good and bad. Let's go back to bad. Let's go back to the definitions. Because again, they're pumping it. They're literally killing y'all. Asking for all that good. Because you're going to get what you're asking for. That's why everybody's going through so much mess. Because so much good is coming to everybody. But you're manifesting the mess. According to the law of duality. And the definition of good. That which is morally right or righteous are the definition of bad, of poor quality or low standard. Now, again, these are quick definitions. There's so many definitions of good and bad. Let's just look at yourself. What's good and what's bad for you? What has turned out good? What has turned out bad for you? Anything you do is going to have two sides for it. So, again, according to what I'm talking about right now, let's just have a plan for the higher and lower. Because, again, it seems like we're caught in this maze of let's let's wait for bad to happen to us. Let's ambush bad according to laws. And again, you can shrink this big bad world if you stay positive versus negative because even your subconscious mind knows positive always wins. The cartoons have done that for you. <laughs> Everything has done that for you. You know positive wins even though According to even the cartoons, the bad will be winning the whole time and winning the whole time. It can literally kill the good. It just, you know, they always got to give a speech when they about to do something and it usually ruins them because again, that's a prideful move, which usually ends up in a fall and positive or righteous usually always wins, even in America, right? So if you want to shrink all the bad and devil stuff that you're going through make it a, a more fair fight first of all understand that it's God that you're experiencing on both sides and asking for guidance to the good you're going to literally get that versus let me get a whole bunch of good stuff oh, okay and again even guidance to the good comes with duality we're literally in a maze of duality I promise you I want to go to school and change my life. I'm experiencing all this bad because you're asking for higher good. Do you know what I had to go through to get? Yep. That, according to the law of duality, you were supposed to go through all that crap. We are traumatized. We're not traumatized by the good, and we can't even we can't even um, enjoy the good because we're so traumatized by the thing that automatically comes with the high thing that we ask for. All right. So, general rhythmic swings. And again, according to the law of rhythm, you can control the swings of your life. And I promise you, I got a workshop that can help you control the swings of your life like they all had in like an hour. Um, so, the general rhythmic swings towards Babylon. So, imagine trying to be your best self in Babylon. Imagine trying to be a righteous person in Babylon. All right, imagine going to the strip club in, in Las Vegas and you trying to convert somebody to Christianity or Islam or Buddhism at the strip club in Vegas. That's where you're choosing to start your ministry. Okay, America is not that far from that. And I'm being super sarcastic, but y'all can stay in context. <laughs> so imagine trying to be your best self Um where wrong is right right now and right seems to be wrong just according to word context so even when it comes to grandparent planning the law of duality is even there 
but we're so young, we don't even think about when we're getting old or what we're going to do when we get old. We wait till we get old, which is our lower mind, when we could be using our best mind to plan when our mind is going to be smaller and younger. I mean, smaller and uh, more condensed. Because again, it seems like physically we retract and mentally it's, Last time I checked, a lot of people are not going to old folks' homes or retirement homes to hear new information. So I'm not talking down on anybody, but it seems like we are going down the older we get. So that's why I pump knowledge, 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 because if you stretch your mind out so far to where when it's time for you to be a grandparent and it's time for you to retract, your retraction years is still smarter than most people in society. So you never lose mental footing um, in older age. And again, I promise you, once you take these law classes, it's over. Because these are legal classes of the mind. None of that, um, you know, regular human laws right now. So, again, even when it comes to your grandparent planning, we usually don't really think and plan for it with our younger minds besides estates and will planning. But we try to really focus on it when we uh, finally reach our grandparent years. Here we go. Another thing is, Jason, what are you talking about? The higher I push, I'm not going to experience more problems. Well, here's a phrase that we all say, new levels, new devils. Y'all heard of that before. <laughs> Which, again, is disrespectful. Now, this is disrespectful to the good in your life. New levels, new devils is a one-sided uh, statement. It has nothing to do with uh, duality. It's new levels, new devils, and angels. Are new levels, new angels, and devils. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, again, you all have heard that before. New levels, new devils. Stop trying to go to higher levels and complain about the higher devils. You're bringing that to yourself. Nobody feels sorry for you and your little Range Rover. <laughs> but you, you feel what I'm saying? Any new higher devils that you experience is because it's the new levels that you wanted to go to. So if you don't have a higher plan, stop trying to go higher because the new devils go kick your butt. But if you progress in a positive way, you become a higher angel to easily whoop that higher devil. Because again, positive, I don't care if the levels are tied, positive always wins. The light always wins. You put a little bit of light in a room full of darkness, that darkness, all that darkness leaves, that little bit of light. So, doesn't do that with the light, with darkness. So again, any new levels that you're going through, you better have a devil plan. And I'm telling you, I have a workshop that can help you easily do that in your mind in one hour to where, uh, what Jay-Z said, you can move in a room full of vultures. <laughs> so, we know, again, that there's no such thing as new levels, new devils. is new levels, new angels and devils. Okay. Now, you will need to um, you will need your productive feelings to overcome your unproductive feelings. So there's a war on our feelings right now. So I'm going to say this again. You need your productive feelings to do all this stuff that you want to do. But there, there you're going to have to overcome your unproductive feelings. And guess what? There's a war on our feelings. I like to call it the numbing down of society. So imagine dumbing down and numbing down and trying to get a lot of work done. <laughs> imagine years and years and years of being dumbed down and years and years and years of being numbed down and trying to start your love life. I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna get married. I mean, I'm, I'm so in love with them. How many years have you and your parents have been dumbed down and numbed down? Uh, all of our lives. Uh, my parents have horrible relationships. My grandparents have horrible relationships. Um, I'm getting married or I want a relationship. 
You want to go higher, sir? Yes. How do you know I want to go higher? You want to go real high? Yeah. What's your higher bad plan? <laughs> Who does that? Well, in the business world, that's a part of your SWOT analysis. Because again, I keep saying it again. In the relationships, if you want to, if you're attracted to anybody, make it business. Because even in the business world, they like to look at your strength and weaknesses. Anything with duality is going to be long lasting versus one sided. Nah, let's not talk about that. Let's just talk about our love for each other. Nah. So again, there's a numbing down and dumbing down of societies is going on. So how do we fight that? The law of vibration. Because the numbing down and dumbing down is a vibrational thing. What level have you currently earned? According to the law of vibration, you earn going down, you earn going up. You do not stay still. And last time I checked, since you can't do anything without your mind, the law of vibration can be increased by the more information you put in your mind. <laughs> when you go to school, and I don't care how much you study, you go to school, you put a whole bunch of information in your mind. You take the summer off. You cannot stay still. This is the law of vibration talking to everybody. You cannot stay still. So you're, you're not going to put any um, information in mind? Okay. And then you go back to school, and then the teacher asks you that question that you used to know on a higher level. You used to know that higher question in high school or a college university or a universe. You used to know that, but you stopped studying, so you went down. And what do we do when a teacher asks us that question that we used to know? What do we do? Because uh, 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 uh. we know we used to be that high. We used to vibrate that high. But you, you, take, you can't take any days off. So guess who just went down? So according to the law of vibration, the, even the bad experiences of a womb of a building, of a house. How many of y'all want to buy a house that somebody was killed in? No, because you can feel that vibration now, right? Or how many of y'all went somewhere and you had a bad feeling or you watched a TV show and the people who were about to get killed, they start playing scary music. Well, that scary music signifies vibration being felt. That's what that room feels like or that's what that sound feels like. So... A lot of our vibrations are down. That's why we are going through so much of this stuff. But let me ask you this. Just let me ask you this. What if you had some stuff popping in Mars that was really, really, really huge? And then you had to come back to Earth for a little bit. Would you experience the same problems or did would that Mars experience take you away from any type of Earth-only mindset? Now, again, I'm not talking about no Elon Musk stuff. I'm saying when you know your destiny and purpose and why you were born, why you were the first sperm cell out of all the sperm cells that lived in your mom because everybody else died. Forget Mars. The universe becomes your friend. And again, there's scientific information that shows that humans have literally got so bored to where they was like, we done did everything on earth. Let's study everything up there. <laughs> There's so much information out here, y'all. So again, according to the law of vibration, you can hide and seek your previous energy levels. You change or they, they can't even see the, your need. Let me tell you this. Your change, something, when I'm telling you you can change so high, and the person's actually on the phone. I'm going to explain Imagine an eagle cutting its foot, but the eagle's en route to its destination. Now, the eagle is messed up because this is a nasty cut on his foot. Who can help that eagle out? <laughs> Who can help that eagle? First of all, somebody would have to be high enough to even see the cut, high enough to even have the conversation with the eagle. High enough to hang on the mountains that the meat eagle would even rest its foot at. To even be able to help the eagle. So the eagle is kind of in a bad place, so-called. The higher you go, 
you kind of play hide and seek. And I'm going to say this again. Your freshman year of high school, you were in the same uh, uh, hallways of the trigonometry and calculus class, but you never touched that door until you vibrated your way into 12th grade or 11th grade. And I and I talked to geniuses too that be like, uh, uh-uh, Jason, I took uh, senior trigonometry my uh, freshman year of high school, and I say, all right, uh, I was gonna say so that would be nice. I, I say, all right, little genius, did you take college trigonometry your freshman year of high school? Well, no. Who does that? Well, people that graduate high school and college is uh, twelve and sixteen years old, and I've showed them cases of kids doing that. So I'm like, they touched that door at that their freshman year because they were vibrating. You put more information, if you can retain more information, you can touch more doors. You can see more doors to touch. Because I don't know about y'all, most of us didn't even see the trigonometry hallway and classroom until we vibrated higher. Well, guess what Earth is? Earth is one big classroom, I mean one big hallway. Everybody keeps saying, it's the end of the world and all these problems and all these cases and outbreaks. <laughs> and everybody who hanging out in the trigonometry or calculus hallway is like, oh, we don't got them problems. Haven't you noticed most of the problems ha- that happened in high school happened in the main hallway, the main bathroom? the lunchroom, <laughs> the gym, the stuff that everybody's doing. So why I focus on what everybody's doing? Because the tri- out, the, the calculus classroom and trigonometry hallway, and those are the nerds. Let's flip it. As far as safety, when's the last time there was a fight in the trigonometry classroom or trigonometry calculus hallway of a high school. I'm gonna move forward. <laughs> That's the safest part of the school. Of high school, high vibration, of high school. That's the safest hallways. <laughs> I can't even see that hallway, man. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm a freshman, or I'm, I'm a 10th grade. I'm gonna get to that point. So, literally, we've been trained to be like, why don't I just go and touch the trigonometry cl- uh, uh, classroom and have a conversation with that teacher my freshman year? Because I haven't put enough information in my um, head to vibrate higher in high school to have that talk with them. Okay, so you won't, you're going to wait to do a reality that's like right in front of you. Cool. Okay, three more to go. And then I'm going to shut it off. Law of five, cause and effect. We made it happen some way, so let's be spiritual coders. Since, again, they're trying to make us robots, let's be spiritual coders. What do you mean, Jason? Okay. The bad is not the best teacher. It's just the teacher or tutor we listen to and remember the most. We have been programmed to only learn best through bad times. And when I say we, it's only for those who apply, who this applies to. So again, how can we recode our minds? So I've been taking coding with my daughters. And I'm going to explain coding to the people who are like, Jason, I don't know what the heck coding is. This is a great example of what coding is. To where my grandma would even know what I'm talking about. So say you walk into a store in a strip mall. And you ask um, the manager if you can use the restroom. And the manager says, uh, our restrooms is only for paying customers only. But let me show you out. If you walk out the store, turn right, walk past five stores, and the bathroom will be on your left. That is an example of coding navigation. You're literally getting instructions. Your body is literally behaving to it to go to the um, to the restroom and no matter what happens if you really have to go nothing is going to stop that movement towards you getting to the bathroom so our journeys need to change right 
What if we can set up coding in our lives by right meditation? Right meditation <laughs> is a form of spiritual coding for your body to play out upon waking up from your physical or even your mental forms of sleep. I'm going to say this again. I can give you scientific proof that coding is um, a real thing. Coding is a real thing. So, if coding according to computers, and we are little computers, if coding says you're going to do this, do this, do this, walk this way, go this way, da 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 and make it to your destination, and this is a real science now, you telling me that we can't be like, oh, shoot, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I can meditate that. So whatever your name is over here, put your name right here. Okay. I am going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to do 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 this. Now, again, that might not be precise like a coder's code going specifically to that spot. But what if you can get good at doing that? Because last time I checked, we don't really use that much of our um, brain or mind capacity. So let's just say, and I'm going to give us the benefit of the doubt. Let's say we use 30% of our brains. And I'm being super sarcastic because that is super high. But I'm being nice. We all use 30% of our brains. Now, if you worked at a job and you only got 30% of your paycheck, you would be pissed off. You would be like, what? I need my whole hundred. I need that. Oh, I need that other seventy. What if you can go like this? Jason was being nice. I know we don't use thirty percent of our brain, but for the sake of the context of this, I want my other seventy too. Why not? Why not? <laughs> why not because again whatever we think is deep and dope and smart and revolutionary the future is going to laugh at unless you unless it's iconic unless it's an E equals MC squared type stuff to where it's like nah that'll hold up that'll hold up over time there's foods that keep you alive and there's foods that take you out duality is everywhere there's literally foods that will keep you alive and literally there are foods that is killing the mess out of us. And watch this. Sometimes we eat food that keep us alive and then we wash it down with foods that are killers. If we do that, why don't we just have a day of eating foods that keep us alive and then having a day of food that will kill us? That will keep you alive longer than mixing death and life. Probably. Um, here's another <laughs> duality journey that needs to change. Doctors live it as long as their patients? How sway? How sway? I'm going to say this again. Another duality journey that needs to change. Doctors living as long as their so called patients. Okay, we're going to stop there. So I got uh, two more. I got two more. Here we go. Law number six, the law of correspondence. Strengthening your best path. Now remember, I'm going to go with the Quran term on that one because, again, that was a term that was literally used in a, in, in a, a religious text. And, it's, and Satan said this in the Quran 716, Satan said, since you have led me astray, I shall surely sit in ambush for them on your straight path. Meaning, I'm going to try to be the best part possible person that I can be. And according to the Quran, de the devil or negative energy says, I'm going to really go hard with you. I'm going to wait in ambush. Meaning, I'm going to wait for you to make a mistake. Okay, so what does the Bible say? Let's go back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible because I promise you it's going to make sense. It's all going to connect. 
the Bible in Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Who do, who's doing all this? I, the Lord, do all these things. Wow, okay. Okay. So let's go back to law number six. Okay, the, according to the law of correspondence, the shortest distance between two points is what? A straight line. I was born to do this, but I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do that. You see where that takes you? What you were born to do takes you here, but when you wanna do that, you're going side to side. Now again, you were born to go that way. So the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. According to that verse, <laughs> I'm going to ambush you in your straight line, on your straight path. Okay, Jason, are we going to talk about a plan to, to beat that? Come on, most definitely. Asking for higher good is dangerous. If you can't, Best plan for higher bad. Watch this. That's never supposed to be feared. It's supposed to be planned for. You're not supposed to fear higher bad. You're supposed to plan for higher bad. So all we do is you create a counter of, oh my God, I want to do all this over. I want to build a tree house. What if the tree falls? What if the wood falls? What if this rots? What if this, just create a higher plan, bad. Just, just really focus on the bad, I promise you. Not to fear it, to plan for it. So when you experience it, it won't be such a shock. It'll be like, ah, oh, that didn't turn out. I actually thought it was going to be worse. You should literally go through that. Like, oh, I thought that was going to be worse than what it was. It feels so good to be prepared. Prepare feels good. Over prepare, you can get cocky. And you should never be cocky, but over prepare feels really safe. Yeah, don't be over prepared. <laughs> it feels safe. Okay, Jason, I already know about duality. Um, talk about something deep. Okay, duality within duality. Um, and we already talked about that. You can't eat uh, good food physically and eat uh, bad food spiritually. Do you know how many vegans who... Um, are spiritually dead? <laughs> you know how many vegetarians who are mentally dead? But they eat good. They eat good. <laughs> There's a duality within the duality in that statement. The reason why I love duality so much, it stops you from focusing on other people because you got so many different things to deal with. And to, to me, the best partnership is the people that can deal with their duality. Because think about it. I'm individualistic. It's me, 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 me. That statement only holds up in when you're, when you're young and strong, when you don't need medical attention, and when you're not going through a test, or when you're not sick. Which is going to happen the older you get. So practicing not needing anybody only works when you're your strongest and you're literally saying i don't care about the people that i'm going to need when i'm weaker because it feels so good being independent when i'm strong it should but when you're strong you're supposed to plan for when you're weak <laughs> and when you're young you're supposed to plan for when you're old i'm just taking it one day at a time no that's your problem Taking it one day at a time is planning for the now. And you're going to take one day at a time. You plan for when you're old, start making sense of your older life. You stop making stupid decisions because you see how your decision is connected to the higher or the older you. So at the end of the day, you still have to make, you still have to look at your life from an older standpoint. Have you ever just really sit and be like, man, 
what would I do if I'm 80 years old? What would I do if I'm 90 years old? Like, literally, what am I doing? Most of your friends are going to be dead. Nobody's calling you to hang out. You might not look, you might not look, you might not look the same. <laughs> I said to myself, I want to look through everything I've done and just be super happy and be able to tell stories because that's what old people's dream is to do. They just, they want to tell stories and be believed. So it's really, so your older years is literally about proving the stuff you did when you were younger. And it feels good when youth are like, oh my God, you're relevant versus none of my family has called me for months. Now again, you're weak. You're not as fast. And you're by yourself. You know how scary that is? It's kind of like a baby. Didn't they say twice a baby? Like once an adult, twice a kid, twice a child? You're, back, you're, you're, you're literally going to be a baby again. So you need good parents when you're younger and then you need good parents when you're older and whoever you're grooming at a younger age is going to be your parent. Unless you're going to be big and strong and da 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 and blah 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 for the rest of your life. No. According to science. According to science. That's all I'm saying. So, I'm almost done. Um, following man's rules and breaking God's mental laws. That won't help you either because all this is happening in God's mind anyway. Because again, our God's form of mind that was created to represent what humans think is divine mind being used by God or the all. Because again, what are we calling God? At the end of the day, the highest high is the most high or the lowest low is the most high. Because remember the Christian reference, Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do these things. What if we're just inside of God's mind or the creator of all this with the option to do bad, with the option to do uh, good, with the option to go left, with the option to go right? With the op what if we just have all these options that are called laws that we have to just follow? And then the more you follow, because, again, the law of gravity, what happens when you follow the law of gravity? Yay, you're not falling off of cliffs and stuff. Yay. Because <laughs> the law of gravity is really, but there's laws of mind. There's laws of mind that need to be followed. And again, if you follow these, your life just works no matter what. Like, like, let's test this out on the law of gravity. Law of gravity, you're fat. Law of the gravity, law of gravity, you're a loser. Law of gravity, um, you're going to end up just like your father. Law of gravity, you're done. Does the law of gravity care about anything that I'm saying? No, because the law of gravity is a law. It just works. Okay, we'll create an airplane. We beat the law of gravity. No, you bent the law of gravity. You didn't beat it. Oh, we're running out of fuel. Or the hot air balloon is running out of gas. The law of gravity wins. Because it's the law. So, Jason, are you saying if you connect laws, these laws with your mind, you just work no matter what? No matter what they say about you. You just work? Yep. 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 Trust me, I've been keeping data on a lot of stuff that if my mind wasn't connected to laws. I was getting bent. Yeah, I was getting bent. Yep. Yep, it looks like you're losing, I promise you. It's always going to look like you're losing, but the laws always win. The laws always win. Last law, law number seven, law of gender. Most balanced teams and groups. This, 20, this 2022, I know you're good. I know it's all about you, you, you. And again, at the end of the day, haven't we focused on ourselves so long? Cool. Now it's time to focus on the we. Booker T. Washington, in his book, um, Up From Slavery, he said, we are all fingers on the same hand. And that's true. We are all fingers on the same hand. Your body is nothing more than teamwork. That's why it's an organization. Um, the, according to the law of duality, it's not good to be off balance. So, the law of gender... Because, again, I deal with some people that be like, I don't even believe in gender. Well, you're still saying the law of duality. 
I believe in gender. I don't believe in gender. So it's still, you're still with the laws. So if you don't believe in this gender part, cool. But again, these existed way before a lot of this stuff was ever around. This has just been renamed over time. Like the law of cause and effect. We might call it karma or reaping and sowing now. But again, so the law of gender, law number seven. Many of us plan for higher goods, but we get shocked when higher bads arrive. You can't go higher or lower in the 3D form and not experience both sides of duality. So again, I just want to make sure we cover that. Whatever side you are currently on qualifies your future experience on the opposite side that you are currently experiencing if you successfully uh, went through it. Now, when you are properly balanced, hard times tend to not last long. I'm going to say this again. When you are properly balanced, hard times tend, I didn't say always, I said tend, to not last as long. There is strength in balanced numbers. Numbers such as teams, groups, parties, organizations, or let's just be frank, families. Families are actually what all so-called individuals come from. So at the end of the day, Individualism is super funny to me because birth is nothing more than teamwork of mommy and daddy. <laughs> okay, you're individualized. Cool. You came into this world under teamwork. I know you can do it on your own. You came into this world. I didn't even say building anything. I just say how you came into this world. You came into this world under the guise of teamwork. Now, taking your best taking uh, taking yourself away from your best matches that was created and birthed again to be around you will have you missing out on the other half and best abundance of your most desired goals now again you're going to reach your goals but you're just missing a half of it again you wouldn't like that with your paycheck but again all these goals that we're getting if they're off balance think about it you're only celebrating for half your paycheck it could be a lot, but again, you're only celebrating half if you build it off balance. So literally, uh, it will have you missing out on the other half of your best abundance or your most desired goals. So since everything and all things have a masculine and feminine component to them, we should look at goals as we look at the connection or creation or overseeing of a family. Let me explain. Goal one could be daddy. Goal two can be mommy. Goal three is the child or the abundance of children. So what if there is a daddy element to your goal? What if there was a mommy element element to your goal? And what if there was a child or abundance of children element to your goal? What do entrepreneurs call their businesses? Their babies. So the law of gender works well with this so-called seeding, birthing, and progression of success of uh, business. If your business is called a baby, you want to be single there too. You want to be off balance there too. When again, your business is even called your baby. If this was helpful, um, definitely I need you to join the email list. Um, I'm going to uh, put out the Gmail account because I'm not giving out any website, any information like that. I'm going to get to know everybody before we move forward. But I promise you, 2022 is about is, is going to definitely be that year, this or at least the setup um, of anything that you want to manifest according to law, not my opinion. Um, so again, we're going to be pushing. I'm going to be pushing my laws workshop. I'm going to be pushing one-on-one -on -one consulting. And I'm going to be pushing the 16-ounce uh, CMOS jars, the 32-ounce CMOS jars, the athletic clothing line, and the suit line. So let me stop the uh, – so we can have a Q&A or anything that I want to talk about, even if y'all don't, don't want to talk. Um, let me stop this.